One of the most asked questions that I get is, Matt, what apps and stuff on your computer do you use on a daily basis? And normally I just ignore these questions because I get it so often I don't have the time to just list out all the applications that I have. And personally, I don't find the stuff that I use to be all that interesting. However, I do keep getting the the questions, so I've decided to do a video on it. Now, I've talked about my workflow in the past, and actually I've made a couple videos about it, but these videos seem to be something that you can do once a year. So here's the 2023 version of what's on my computer. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I'm going to start off with the applications that I use the most, and I might as well start off with the one that is almost always running when I do a video, and that is Audacity. Now, not all YouTubers do this, but the way I've learned to make videos is that I record my audio separately from the video. It's just, I actually do, I do this for two reasons. First, I record the audio in OBS and in Audacity. That way, if one or the other is corrupted, I have a backup. It just seems to be the best way for me. But also, I just find it easier to edit the audio in Audacity when it's in its raw form, and I don't have to import anything. It's just something that I've started to do since the beginning of my YouTube career. So Audacity is the thing that I use. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with Audacity over the years. I like that it's so functional. I can't stand the interface, and they have changed the interface a little bit since the takeover a, a year ago or something, but it's still very dated. I don't like it. It doesn't do a very good job at all of following your system's themes, so you're, you're pretty much stuck with it looking like this. They do have a dark theme, and I can't change that while it's recording, but <laughs> but the dark theme is just, I mean, it's so bad. <laughs> like, like, that, like, like it was a, it was a zero effort dark theme from what I can tell. It's just like, it, it was, it's just really bad. So, uh, yeah, Audacity is, is kind of stuck looking like this, but it's still probably one of the two most used apps on my computer. The other one, it's OBS, which you can't actually see because it's on the other monitor, but I could actually, I think maybe do this here so you can actually see audacity we can just change these things around so you can see um and you get the cool effects but yeah i that's what i use to record all of my videos is obs and uh, i don't do anything special with it although i do use the flat pack so that i can have the integrated youtube stuff which i use for my streams specifically the podcast and other than that I don't do anything special here. I know a lot of people use the browser docs or whatever they are to integrate chat from Twitch or whatever. I don't need to do any of that stuff. So mine's just the basic stuff with some of the docs moved around. But other than that, OBS is what I use to record my videos. And it is awesome. It is very good. I do have some key bindings attached to my huge mouse. And uh, it works sometimes. Like if I wanted to, I think if I wanted to switch to my face, which there it is there, and if I wanted to get it go away, yeah, there we go. Now you can see my face down here, but I don't use that uh, scene very much anymore. And I don't know what's the no the no came one, one actually is. I think this is bound to a uh, key binding, but I'm not sure what it is. I don't use it. I'm really bad at using the key bindings for OBS, uh, even though I set them up. Anyway, so that is that one. The third app that is on my computer that I use a lot, like seriously, seriously a lot, is Vim. This is specifically NeoVim. And it is, what can I say about Vim that I haven't said before? It is amazing. What you're looking at right now is the outline for my Silver Blue uh, video that I'm procrastinating on right now. So I've, I've done the outline. I haven't made it further than this. So you guys are getting a sneak peek behind the curtain as, as it is. So uh, have at it. That, that is, uh, like I said, I use, I use Vim or NeoVim and it's just so good. And I've talked about it many, many times, so I don't really need to spend any more time on it. So uh, yeah, that one's that. The browser that I use is Firefox. I'm if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm never happy with the browser that I'm using. I always want to find something better. I always consider the grass greener on the other side. And I'm at that point right now where I'm itching to go switch to a different browser for no apparent reason. Firefox hasn't done anything to piss me off or anything. I just want to use something different. Maybe it's ADD. I don't know. But I'm at the point right now where I really kind of do want to use something different, but right now I'm still using Firefox. I'm probably going to try to use Cute Browser. Cute Browser is calling my name again. Uh, 
and it has so many great features but the thing that's holding me to firefox right now is tab groups it's this little button up here and i can you can see how many tabs i have open in each of these groups i mean it's it's kind of nuts without those things i would just you know i'd be kind of lost so i need cat tab groups and that's the reason why i'm still on firefox there it is okay so that's firefox another one that i use pretty much every day is gimp i am not a gimp master or whatever it is i'm a, I, I know some of the key bindings and I know enough to be dangerous, but other than that, I'm not very good at design work whatsoever, but uh, the basic features that I need are all in GIMP and I'm used to it. Now, I usually customize the UI so that it looks a little bit more like Photoshop, so I, you know, transition so all this stuff is, you know, here somewhere, and that way I can make it look a little bit different. And I'll show you what I mean. Put that up there and the text one down here and then I can change this so it looks like that that's usually what I do but I'm for whatever reason hadn't done it until right then so you guys got to see it just you know live on camera I don't know why I prefer this particular layout better than the other one but I do anyways so GIMP is another app that I use all the time I edit all of my videos in Kden Live I've talked about Kden Live before it is one of those applications that is you know it's really good but it's also infuriating at times you know sometimes it crashes sometimes it does really stupid shit you know i you know it's one of those things you know, yeah i love it but i also kind of hate it so it's one of those things kden live is the best video editor on linux it's also one that constantly infuriates me so uh, that's kden live another application that i use all the time for editing is mark text and i use this when i'm in a document that is over a hundred thousand words and the job that I do often sends me batch articles all in one document. It's a pain in my rear end because nothing handles a document that size well on Linux. Absolutely nothing does. LibreOffice bogs down. Vim bogs down. Uh, if you're using Google Docs, which I have to use Google Docs, sometimes that bogs down in a browser with a document that size. And, you know, I've tried to get them to change it, but they won't do it. That's just the way they send it. It's usually, you know, 10 articles, 20 articles, all in one document. For whatever reason, that's the way they've decided to do it. Anyways, you guys don't need to hear about my job. Uh, Mark Text seems to be the only one that will take a large document that size and actually function fairly well. I have noticed, however, since I switched my NVIM configuration to Lua, it has been working better with large documents. So uh, I may end up stopping using Mark Text and going back to Vim because I prefer Vim over Mark Text, but you know, needs must, right? So that's Mark Text. I also use Vert Manager from time to time. I don't use it nearly as much as I used to. When I was doing the distro reviews things that I was always doing on the channel, I would do them in virtual machines, and I've since moved away from that for obvious reasons. I've talked about it in video, and then it spread throughout the whole Linux community, and people talked about it and talked about me and all that stuff. So <laughs> uh, that video was very weird. I didn't expect that to have the response that it did. Uh, but I don't use virtual machines nearly as much as I used to. However, I have am planning on using them more because in as I talked about in my can you trust people with your data video one of the things I'm going to try to do this year is become more conscientious of my privacy and one of those things that I'm going to do is do much more of my work inside of the VM so I can kind of control more about what goes in and out of that in terms of data so that's one of the things that I plan on doing over the course of this year so I'll be using vert manager here more often no what's on my computer video would be complete without this. This is my favorite application on Linux. Maybe MPV comes close now. I've talked about that in a recent video. But this here is Crusader. And Crusader is a file manager. And you have never met anyone who has a bigger crush on an application than I do when it comes to Crusader. I love Crusader. It's fantastic. It does literally everything that you could want it to do and so much more. There's things on here that I've never used that it can do and that's just the way a KDE application works. This is, I mean, Crusader, and I've talked about this in videos before, is just a fantastic application for me. I love tabs, and the way this does tabs is fantastic. It has permanent dual panes so that I can have two panes up all the time. As far as I'm aware, you can't even turn off dual pane mode in Crusader, which is fine with me because I'd never use a single pane mode anyways. The customization here is just 
awesome because you can basically do anything you want in terms of how you want it to look. You, obviously, it has image preview like you'd expect. It does. It just Crusader is fantastic, and if it were a human, I would marry it and have its babies. I'm. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> true, but also frighteningly, uh, either frighteningly funny or funny, funnily frightening. I don't know. <laughs> That's so bad. Anyways, Crusader is fantastic, and uh, I will continue to love it forever and ever and ever. I use BTOP for system system monitoring. I don't use this nearly as often as I used to. I used to be kind of obsessed with monitoring my system in terms of temperature and processes and stuff like that. Uh, I've kind of gotten away with it just because life has been so busy. I When I'm sitting at my computer, I kind of just really need to work, so... Uh, yeah, right now I have it up and it's fine. The temperatures are also kind of high because I'm recording right now, so th that's not that big of a deal. Anyways, that's B top. So just to kind of wrap this up, there are a couple other things that I do on my computer that you should know about. So the overall experience that you're seeing right now is i3 window manager, specifically it's i3 gaps. Uh, I have not seen the brand new merged version of i3 yet that has gaps merged in so i'm still on i3 gaps this um and the bar that you see at the top is polybar this is my primary window manager and setup and it is awesome and every time i switch away from it and i've made videos about switching away from it even recently uh, i always come running back to it because i3 is just kind of the window manager that i enjoy the most but i'm, I'm assuming that eventually i will find another one that i like just as much because i do that but i3 is what i'm using right now and it's still amazing Outside of that, I also have several scripts that I use all the time. Uh, right now, of course, I can't show them to you because my, my keyboard has just completely stopped working and I don't know why. So um, that's definitely something I'm going to have to figure out when I'm done with this video. But I have a writing script that I've shown on camera before. Uh, I will try to get some B-roll of that that I can put in here and uh, show you what that does. The last one that I should talk about is the one that you're still seeing on, in front of you is Alacrity. That's still my terminal emulator of choice. And it is a very good terminal emulator. I have, however, considered switching to Kitty because supposedly Kitty has built-in image preview for Ranger, or at least support for that. And I want to use that because UberZug is no longer something that I can get on my computer, and I miss that image preview in my Ranger. Now, I have set up W3M or whatever it's called in Ranger. Again, can't show you because things are not working on my computer right now, but... It's not as good as UberZug was. I'm considering switching to Kitty and seeing how that works. So that's something for the future. Maybe if I do that, I will make a video on it. So that's it for this video. Uh, I don't know what happened there at the end, why my my keyboard is not working. Uh, I unplugged it, plugged it back in. <laughs> that usually fixes it. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on there. I guess I'm going to have to reboot or something. But anyways, you don't care about that. Uh, usually things don't go wrong on the video that bad. And also, I, I, I'm... I have things switched around. Usually I have OBS on this monitor where the camera's at, so I would look at my face, so I'm like talking to myself. Now I have OBS and Audacity switching places, so I'm looking at my face like I normally do, but that means I'm not looking at the camera, which is really confusing me, and it's freaking me the hell out. So I gotta end this video before I have a, a, a psychotic break or something. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that is it for this video. If you... I would love to hear what you have on your computer. What are the favorite apps that you use every day? The things that you can do without? In the comment section below, let me know. If you want to follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey, those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. Links for YouTube and Libera Pay will be in the video description. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Just seriously, without you, the channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very very much for your support you guys are all amazing thank you so much thanks everybody for watching i'll see you next time